All right, so uh, welcome to lecture four. In this lecture, we're gonna cover a bunch of the basic theorems about taking limits of, limits of sequences and how limits um, interact with basic operations like addition and multiplication and division and so on. Uh, and so just some of the general basic properties of convergent sequences. Uh, one of the big focuses here is that um, with these limit theorems, we stop having to do epsilon, you know, epsilon delta or like epsilon capital N type proofs of convergence for like every single sequence we come across. So like um, using these theorems, we can kind of break sequences down into very simple pieces and then just analyze those and build up what the limit should be based on that. So I want to give you kind of an example of that actually to begin with to kind of motivate what we're going to do. There are a couple other things thrown into this lecture about like boundedness of sequences and, um, and stuff like that. But the main focus is going to be uh, how to basically pass limits through operations like addition and multiplication and so on. Uh, so let's look at kind of an example. Um, in fact, let's look at the example that one of the examples we were looking at in the last lecture. So we were taking, um, so basically taking limits of complicated sequences. Oops. So this one isn't super complicated, but it'll illustrate um, the idea. So taking the limit of the sequence, um, let's see, let me remind myself what it was. It was something like, right, 3n plus 1 over 7n minus 4, right? That was the one we saw before, and we said that was 3 7. So. The book actually mentions this when they first cover this example, but um, one sort of way, one way of approaching this, what we did before was just sort of a direct proof from the definition, right? We just let epsilon be greater than zero and we picked capital N. But another way of looking at this would be to sort of rewrite the sequence. So let's call this, this is SN, right? Um, so if we rewrite, Sn equals uh, n plus one, or sorry, uh, that's not what I wanted. In fact, let me make sure I get this right. So, um, all right. <clears throat> All right, guys, so welcome back to lecture four. Um, in this lecture, we're going to be covering some basic theorems about sequences and about limits um, and just some of their basic properties. Uh, one of the focuses of this lecture is theorems about how limits interact with the operations of addition and multiplication and, and division and so on, um, which basically those theorems end up giving us ways of taking complicated sequences and breaking them down into small pieces that are easy to analyze. So, it makes it so that a lot of complicated sequences we come across, we no longer have to do direct proofs of convergence from the definition using epsilon and n. We can just use these uh, basic limit theorems to build up a lot of these complicated sequences. There are a few other things thrown in to this one about boundedness 
and about limits going to infinity and stuff like that. But the main focus is about uh, these uh, theorems about passing limits through operations, like algebraic operations. Uh, so before we actually get into the theorems, I want to kind of give one motivating example, um, which is, um, which I'll actually use uh, one of the examples that we were looking at before. So let's say taking limits of complicated sequences. Okay. So the example we were looking at before was limit of, um, it was 3n plus 1 over 7n minus 4, and uh, which we'll call that Sn, right? So uh, the way we did it before was just directly with the definition using epsilon and then picking capital N and so on. But another way of looking at this would be to re rewrite the expression for Sn, right? So rewrite Sn equals, and then instead of this, we would factor N out of the numerator and denominator and say three plus one over N over seven minus four over N, right? This, you might've actually uh, sort of thought of this before. You've probably seen this before somewhere. And then you're used to just basically saying, well, the one over N and the four over N approach zero. So obviously this thing approaches three sevenths, right? But actually when you're doing that, when you, when you make that argument, you're doing something more complicated than you realize because what you're saying is, that, um, well, here, let me sort of lay out how we would make that argument formally after we've uh, built up the theorems that we're about to see in this uh, lecture, okay? So this is how you'd go about it using the limit theorems, okay? First, we would say, um, let, uh, I don't know, let's say a n equals one over n and b n is, uh, let's say just four over n. And uh, let's say it's clear. Okay, let's just take for granted that um, a n and b n converge to zero. Okay, although there are actually specific theorems that will prove that that would, um, that we could invoke to justify that. Uh, but yeah, you'll, you'll see later. Um, okay, so then if we say, you know, CN is three plus AN, so say we define CN to be three plus AN and DN is seven minus BN because limits add, and I'm gonna put that in quotes, the limit of CN is three and the limit of DN is seven, okay? So when I say limits add, what I really mean is that there is a theorem which says that if you take two convergent sequences and add them together, the result will be another convergent sequence whose limit is the sum of the original two limits, right? So in this case, CN, CN is, a, is a sum of two convergent sequences where one of the convergent sequences is just a constant sequence who, who all of whose terms are three. And then the other convergent sequence is a n, which we already said converges to zero. And the same thing is true for dn. dn is a sum of the constant sequence seven, which is convergent, and negative bn, which is also clearly convergent. Although actually you could argue that the scalar multiplication by negative one uh, comes from another theorem. That, that 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 doesn't affect the convergence of Bn. Uh, that also comes from a different theorem, but let's just ignore that for now. Then, because limits divide, let's say, uh, funny, funny terminology, but um, then we have uh, Sn, which equals Cn over Dn converges to three 
sevenths. Okay, so there's another theorem here that says now we can take Cn and divide it by Dn, and because each of them converge and also Dn does not converge to zero, uh, those facts all combined let us actually take this limit and say that it's three sevenths without having to do any epsilon, uh, you know, arguments with epsilon and n. Okay, so this is a preview of the kind of thing we want to be able to do. And obviously, as we go on, you know, pretty much almost as soon as we leave this, you know, chapter and the problems in this chapter, I won't be expecting you to justify every limit you take in this way unless it's clear from context that you're supposed to do that. Okay, so later on in the class, once we've moved well past this point, um, you, you'll be able to use these theorems without saying anything. You'll just be able to like write an expression like this for SN and then just pass the limit through and immediately say, okay, it's clear that this converges to three sevenths. But for now, again, remember in the moment, we want to make sure we're being very careful about everything because you have to learn how to think carefully about things before you can comfortably stop thinking carefully about them, I guess, right? Uh, you have to get in the habit of thinking carefully first. That's kind of one of the main patterns of, uh, you know, or one of the yeah, main uh, themes of how this, this class is structured. Okay, anyway, so um, in the next section, we'll start actually looking at the theorems themselves and proving some of them, although not all of them, but uh, that's it for this one.